Hello everybody and welcome. This is an updated release of the Cavalon 915 review film and I wanted to highlight a few things, especially for the US market. The 915 Cavalon has been around in the UK for about a year now, but I know Autogyro have what is termed certified gyroplanes approved in the US and I'm sure the 915 engine option will be popular. In the UK, early aircraft had some vibration issues because the engine mountings were initially the wrong hardness and that caused a resonance in the cockpit. That was fixed in the UK towards the end of 2019. Also, in the UK, the aircraft is not permitted to have the front wheel spat. I've seen some US films that highlight the extra engine power as being a bonus because it helps with flying larger people. Wrong. Don't go down that rabbit hole. In the UK, 915 Cavalon is approved for flight to 560 kilos, but the empty weight is usually more due to the motor being heavier and the inevitable extra spec that is typical in what is seen as a premium product. So empty weight on the aircraft in this film is 340 kilos. So you just have 220 kilos of headroom and you need fuel. So add 30 kilos of fuel, which might scrape two hours of flying, and now you have 190 kilos for people and stuff. So maybe two times 90 kilo people and a bag, a spare can of oil and a couple of bottles of water. Enjoy the review. Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. In this film, we're going to look at Auto Gyro's Cavalon. This particular aircraft is quite nicely specced and it also comes fitted with a brand new Rotax 915 motor and it's one of the first Cavalons I've ever seen fitted with the Rotax 915. The Cavalon came about a year after Magni released their M24 model, also as you remember in side-by-side -side configuration and it therefore became the third variant in Auto Gyro's range. It was released in the UK in 2011 and the main power plant of choice is Rotax 914 power although there are a couple of 912 powered aircrafts it's not the most popular because of the obvious increase in weight and drag with the wider frontal area. Rotax 914 power also gives power to Cavalon Pro which is the fully certified model but I'll cover that aircraft in a separate film. Unlike Magnus M24, which had got a glass fibre body over a steel frame, the Cavalon is a full monocoque structure where the mast and tailplane bolt directly to that composite body. However, unlike the Calidus, where tailplane and mast are then formed in one piece and bolted to the monocoque, in Cavalon, the tailplane and the mast are separate. It basically means that the mast starts just above the air intake, which you can see on top of the cabin. And I've removed the rear bodywork on this aircraft, so in a minute we'll go to the rear of the aircraft and you can see a little bit how those structures mount to the monocoque. Control to the rotor head is via push-pull cables and that's consistent with Calidus. But as we come around to the rear of the aircraft, you can see that that tailplane bolts into a, a, a composite structure, sort of stinger if you like, out of the monocoque and the mast just via those two uh, bolts just above the air intake. This has got the later rotor head which allows it a VNE of 120 miles an hour. I say later rotor head because the original Cavalons had a VNE of 100 miles an hour which is consistent therefore with Magni M24. And that 20 miles an hour, bear in mind VNE is an absolute, not a target. That does give it a useful margin above M24, especially in the cruise. If we look at the doors, you can see that there's good fresh air vents. You've got clear view panel and a fresh air vent at the front of the door. And that, because of the enclosed nature of these things, is a very welcome addition. As we do look at the aircraft from this side, one criticism of Cavalon is this sort of front, what would be an automotive term, the A-pillar. It 
it's quite it's quite wide and it's certainly wider or significantly wider than M24 and what you find is that when you're sat in the thing flying it you are moving your head in order to give a good lookout. As we look inside the aircraft there's a whole raft of different interior trim options. This as you can see has got cloth seats, it's also got uh, cabin heating and uh, they also do a leather option, they do lumber. Uh, down in the footwell we can see consistent pedal adjustment as per the new 2017 Sport and uh, that does make it very convenient to fit all shapes and sizes. They also do an air conditioning module which I've seen on uh, Middle Eastern markets. Throttle brake combination is consistent with uh, all auto gyro products and if we uh, move the throttle you can see that on the other side is the instructor uh, throttle. Instructor or passenger would be left hand seat P1 in the right. One area where Cavalon scores very highly is in storage. You've got a lot of storage behind the seat, also on the rear bulkhead. Um, headsets plug in just in the top of the bulkhead and on top you've got hangers for headsets. This is a lovely sunshade and that is a great addition especially because of you know it protects you from the beating sun. And uh, as we look at the dashboard it's a reasonably familiar layout for auto gyro products. The one criticism of the aircraft is this mounting for iPad or uh, other tablet devices and if it's feet if it's presented in landscape then it just hides all of the engine T's and P's and that really is a bit of a a bit of a poor thing really because clearly those instruments are fundamental to the safe op safe operation of the aircraft this is a fuel gauge we've got alarms across the top in the usual place this is a fuel flow meter for 915 because the range of fuel consumption is quite a lot with 915 You've also got lane A, lane B alarms because, and remember you with 915, you've got no mags but just sort of dual channels through the single ECU. So instrumentation, we've got outside air temperature, radio transponder. This is a traffic awareness system, rotor RPM, engine RPM, uh, airspeed indicator and vertical speed, altimeter. You'll note the 120 VNE on the ASI. You've got rotor flight brake and the pressure for that system depending on where the mode is set. And then rather than the mags, we've got lane A and lane B. Uh, that again is reflectance of Rotax 915. Also 915 specific is this, which is emergency battery power. And that's because, because of the nature of 915 and its ECU, if you lose power, Clearly the ECU fails and the thing falls out of the sky or, you know, doesn't have power anymore. So this provides an emergency power to keep the ECU running. That switch panel is relatively new for Cavalon in the sense that it doesn't appear on any other aircraft and it's effectively a bunch of circuit breakers. The other thing is this is the override for the rotors so that if the rotors need to be aligned fore and aft, uh, then you can override and pre-rotate to spin them up. The other thing which is uh, quite nice for this aircraft and it's specific to 915 is the constant speed prop which is hydraulically adjustable and that's obviously a change from the electrically adjustable props that are usual on these auto gyro machines and, and the control for that prop adjustment is you know more familiar to fixed wing pilots other thing in the interior is are uh, the compass just on top of the dashboard and the you can see the yaw string which is just you know stuck onto the uh, windscreen as per you know most light helicopters max all at weight 560 which is uh, better than m24 at 500 but empty weight of 340 and remember Cavalon will take 100 litres of fuel and, okay, whilst you don't need to use all of it, 100 litres, 72 kilos, and it don't have a lot of headroom to max all up weight. And I think a lot of people who fly these 915 Cavalons are going to have to be careful that they don't fly illegally. It probably also explains the relatively low spec of the seats because you could have had leather, lumber, 
and seat heating and I guess that's deleted to try and keep some of the empty weight down. One nice feature of Cavalon, however, is the fact that you can remove the doors. And if you look at these uh, catches, you'll notice that they're, they've got springs uh, in them to make that removal even easier, which is good if you're in a hot country or if we ever get a summer in the UK. Tailplane is consistent with Sport 2017 or Calida, certainly in terms of size and effectiveness. Slightly smaller than MT-03, as you'll remember. You've got a stone guard um, down there just to protect the prop. It also helps keep the noise signature down slightly. You'll notice the familiar uh, 915 styling of the exhaust, which is a much bigger unit than normal. Coolers on top of the motor and the coolers are much nicely packaged for 915 than they were on the Sport variant. And then you'll also notice this prop well, this is the spinner, obviously, and there's the hydraulic uh, lines that feed that constant speed. So actually a wood comp prop, and uh, and very nice it is. It's actually a very efficient propeller, uh, is the wood comp. Over on the left side of the motor, again, you can see additional coolers on top, which is well packaged. Down here, we've got wastegate for the turbo. It's obviously the exhaust side. Uh, then... Um, uh, the exhaust side for the turbo, intake side for the turbo and um, air filter or air cleaner for the intake side of the turbo. So there you go, there's Auto Gyro's Cavalon, this one 915 power and I think it's the, probably the nicest looking, best performing two-place side-by-side gyroplane on the market. The only downside, especially in the UK, the UK market for these things is just, well, almost non-existent new at the moment. And that's because, for some reason, neither Magni or Autogyro have got any hedging strategy for their currency. And so, as we know, as the currency moves, these things get whipsawed. This aircraft's about 140,000 sterling new, which is expensive. It does support the used market, however. There are about 90,000 for a good used one. But there you go. Fly safely.